In this video, I'm going to be talking about the very basics of cryptocurrency investing. So this video is made for my friends and family, as I believe the bigger risk is not to be thinking about cryptocurrency. So with that, let's get into the episode. So I'll go through a little PowerPoint presentation. It should only take about five or 10 minutes. And so this episode is investing in cryptocurrency, getting started, the one thing that you need to know, and the risks. And of course, yes, I need to say that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing with you my learning. So this is really just for my friends and families to share with them my process and how I go about doing these things, but I'm by no means an expert. So getting started is actually a lot simpler than you would think. So for example, if you want to buy a banana or you want to buy an apple, then where do you have to go? You would go to Coles or Woolworths. You basically go to the place where it's being sold. And so the same thing, if you want cryptocurrency, you go to an exchange where it's being sold. And an exchange is somewhere that you exchange your dollars for cryptocurrency. So just like a centralized exchange is like a Woolworths or a Coles. So basically what they do, so this is the beginner's level of cryptocurrency. They buy the cryptocurrency, so they might buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin, and then they'll sell that Bitcoin to you at a profit. So in the same way that Coles and Woolworths work. So they'll go to a farmer, they'll basically buy the supply, and then they'll sell that supply to you. The difference here is that when you buy a banana and you leave the shop, it's yours. You can eat it, you can do whatever you want, you can throw it out. It's completely yours. With an exchange, while your cryptocurrency is being held on an exchange, it's not technically yours. So this is where you have what's called decentralized exchanges. So this is taking cryptocurrency up to another level. But this is part of the risk, but it's also not a massive risk. So it really depends how safe the exchange is. But if, it, if an exchange goes bankrupt, then basically that's unlucky for you. If you've left your cryptocurrency on there, that's unlucky for you. So the thing that I always recommend is to just buy things and then take it off the exchange. So if anything ever happens to the exchange, at least it's still in your possession. And taking it off the exchange is as simple as what's called a wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet. So it's basically just like a digital version of a wallet. The other thing that you really need to understand is that there's thousands of cryptocurrencies. So everybody knows Bitcoin, that's the most common one. But everything else that's not Bitcoin is called an altcoin. So they're alternative coins. So for me personally, I don't usually invest in Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, I don't invest in Bitcoin. I only invest and buy other cryptocurrencies because I like using centralized exchanges. This is the level up of cryptocurrency where you own and manage your own assets, which is what cryptocurrency is all about. It's designed to take away the middlemen. And so you own and control it all. So an exchange is very simple. So here's an example of a page of an exchange. So what I'm what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So this is an Australian exchange called CoinSpot. And if you sign up, you get $10 a Bitcoin and I get $10 a Bitcoin. And this is basically you log in, you get your two-factor authentication and you got all these little options here. So you got dashboard, wallets, buy, sell. It's very, very simple. So you would just go to buy, sell, and then you'd go to buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin. Once you understand the simplicity of it, it's nowhere near overwhelming. Of course, if it's your first time, it's like going to the tuna aisle and you want to just get a can of tuna and there's 10,000 tuna cans to pick from and it's kind of overwhelming. Once you understand that it's really just the same thing with cryptocurrency, it's very easy to just just basically block out all the noise and focus on what you need to focus on. The one thing that you need to learn is about the cycles. So cryptocurrency works basically in four-year cycles. Some people say that the four-year cycles work on what's called the Bitcoin halving and others say it's about the global liquidity index. So there's a, there's a big hedge fund manager that I follow or former hedge fund manager who used to work for Goldman Sachs. And his thesis is that it all relies on the global liquidity index. And so the global liquidity index is basically just the liquidity in all around the world. And that's based on five things, basically. So it's based on like central banks, monetary policies. So for example, in Australia, interest rates rise and fall. So it's based on these types of mechanics all around the world with all the central banks. You have global credit supply. So the amount of credit in the monetary system you have the global credit demand. So 
obviously when there's more demand, there's more credit. You have the stock market, so the rising stock market. And this, this one is probably the biggest reason why I'm in cryptocurrency. So people often say cryptocurrency is a Ponzi. It's a, uh, it's a scam. It's a, it's a tulip effect. It's a tulip bubble. But if you really understand how the stock market works, it's basically exactly the same. So the stock market is just a bubble. And the only thing that keeps it afloat and stops it from just tanking and going to not going to zero, but really dropping dramatically is whenever it has a big drop, they print more money. And so when they print more money, the global liquidity goes up. And then so basically that liquidity spreads out into stocks and other assets. And it's also based on economic growth as well. And so the halving. So one of the things that is a design feature of Bitcoin is it has a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin. And so this is what's called mining. When you're printing or minting new Bitcoin, it's called Bitcoin mining. So every four years, the amount that is mined is halved. So it's being mined every single day. And the people that are mining it are the ones that are basically running the network. So it's a whole bunch of decentralized computers all around the world. They're running the network, they're supporting the network and their reward for supporting the network is they get rewarded in Bitcoin. And so every four years, their reward gets halved. And so this is called the halving. So at the moment, there's over 20 million Bitcoin in circulation. When it first started back in 2009, there would have been... There would have been zero. And so as the network got started, it would have it would have gone up to a million Bitcoin and then up to 2 million Bitcoin, so on and so forth, up to the point now where it's 20 million Bitcoin. And the total supply that it can ever be is 21 million. And it's probably going to take around, oh, probably just under 100 years for it to actually get to that supply. And the reason why it has a fixed supply is because of the global financial crisis. So one of the things that really is a phenomena in all monetary systems is inflation. So when there's too much money, the value of your dollar goes down. So if there's $100 in circulation in total, then all of a sudden they go and print another $100, then the value of every single one of those dollars basically halves because there's more money in circulation. So this is how economies have collapsed in the past. So when you think about the Soviet Union, that would have such massive inflation that you'd need wheelbarrows of money just to go get a loaf of bread because they just keep printing money to keep it afloat. And this same phenomena is actually happening now with the US dollar. It's just happening at a different rate. But every single monetary system faces this one fundamental problem. And that's what Bitcoin is trying to solve. So I personally think it's probably a little bit of both. It is a little bit of what actually causes the price to go up and fall is these four-year cycles, which I think is probably half due to the Bitcoin halvening and half due to the global uh, liquidity index. So it's either one it is, doesn't really matter. The important thing to understand is it follows these four-year cycles, which makes it very simple. The other important thing to understand is just because it follows these four-year cycles doesn't mean it's always going to follow these four-year cycles. Things can change it. And as it gets more predictable, then more uncertainties can actually happen. So here's the chart from the hedge fund manager or former hedge fund manager that I was talking about. So he talks about the global, the global liquidity index in seasons. So you have the yellow in summer, the red is fall, the blue is winter, and the green is spring. So at the moment, we are in summer. So summer is a time of upward momentum and then fall upward momentum. And then winter is like the harvest time. So winter is where things start to fall away. So if you look here, it's not exactly to the four years, but if you look here, so for example, this was, these, these charts look very similar to the Bitcoin price. And so you'll see here, this is a, this is a top that it has like a dip. And here's another top where it has a dip. And this was COVID. I think this was COVID right here, this massive dip. And then this is where we are now. So it tends to stop around the winter to springtime. So the fall, winter, spring, it starts to reverse. So there was a reverse here, 2018, 2019. And that's when Bitcoin had its top. And the last one here, 2021, 2022, also when Bitcoin had its top. 
And so the next one is going to be about 2005, 2006. So that's when the next Bitcoin top is going to happen. And so Bitcoin is like the leader of everything. So as Bitcoin is going up, all the other cryptocurrencies are going up as well because everybody's people will either buy Bitcoin or they're also buying other, other cryptocurrencies. And another thing that happens is as they buy Bitcoin, the experts, as they start to get a nice high price, they'll take out of the Bitcoin and then they'll go into some of these other cryptocurrencies called altcoins and then they'll start to go up. So that's how everything gets dragged up together. And then what happens is when it hits like a cycle top, so these four years, basically there'll be like a top point and it'll be the high price. And then after that, everything goes down for about a year. And then everything slowly starts to go up for the next three years until it gets to its top. And then again, it will go down for a year. And then again, it will slowly go up for the next three years. And then again, it will hit a top. So this is basically how the cycles work. So that's really the one thing that you need to understand. If you understand the cycles, that's the one and only thing that you need to keep an eye on if you're a beginner. There are, of course, lots of risks. So for me personally, I only risk what I'm willing to lose. And I'm pretty much willing to lose everything because my life is fine. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a full-time volunteer. I, I, live in a, I live in a meditation center where everything is, I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay bills. And I, I've got food. So I have no I have no issues whatsoever. The only reason why I keep putting money into cryptocurrency is because I want to actually change the world. And so I believe cryptocurrency, because it's the fastest growing asset, is the best way to make a lot of money to change the world. And so one of the things that I stay focused on is the cycles. Of course, I explore cryptocurrency pretty much every day because I'm much more advanced. But it's the one thing that I keep my eye on all the time, the cycles. All I know is when everything is low, nobody wants to buy. And that's when I'm buying because nobody else wants to buy. That's when it's dirt cheap. That's where you hear in the news, Bitcoin is dead. Cryptocurrency is dead. It was a scam. It was a bubble. All of these things, that's when you buy. So you're really going against your what you're hearing in the world. It's really one of the hardest things to do. And I try to understand what I have money in first because it actually helps my conviction. So when I have a lot of conviction, then my mindset is stable because again, there's going to be lots of things telling you, there'll be people telling you it's a scam, it's a bubble, it's a tulip bubble. But if you have conviction in what you believe in and you believe in what you have money in, then it's going to help stabilize your mindset. And that's what it, that's what it all comes down, down to for me. And again, I need to clarify, I'm not an expert. I have done well, but I could definitely have done better but the one flaw that I had was my mindset. So at one point, my portfolio was seven figures and I had never seen that kind of money in my life before. So it was more than my mind was really willing to handle. I wasn't expecting ever to get to seven figures, let alone within such a short period of time. The amount of gains that you can make is really explosive. So not knowing it, and not being in it, in my opinion, is a bigger risk than being in it. So people say, oh, it's a scam. It's risky. It's only risky because people don't understand the four-year cycles because they'll put money in when they start hearing it on the news. And when do you start hearing it on the news? When it's already close to the top, when it's already near the end of the four-year cycle. That's when everybody's hearing about it because it's all over the news. And that's when people are starting to put money in. So they're putting in at the completely wrong time and then it goes down and then they'll say, oh, I've lost money. It was a scam. It was a Ponzi. But really the problem there was they didn't understand the four-year cycles and they bought at the wrong time and they should not have sold and they ended up selling at a loss. So this is one of the big problems. And my general thesis is again, it's more risky not to know this because the monetary system is going to change in the future, whether we like it or not. It always does. It, it's going to continue to change until we eventually get to a system of abundance and infinite, well, infinite abundance, in my opinion. That's the monetary system that we're headed for, where everybody can win together. But at the moment, the monetary system that we have at the moment, it's not like this. So until it's perfect, until it's abundant, then it's always going to have its flaws. It's always going to hit a, hit a wall where it can't go any further. And that's what I personally see within the financial system, the global financial system at the moment. One of the big things people always ask is, is it real money? So if you really think about money, 
money is just numbers on a screen. Physical cash is really disappearing. So more and more now you, you can even you're using your phone. It's just you go to your bank account on your computer and you see you see the numbers there. You can use your smartwatch or your smart ring and that's what money is these days. So it's just numbers on a screen. And if everyone all at once right now took all their money out of the bank, the bank wouldn't the banking system would collapse in an instant. There's not enough money in the banking system for everybody to actually be able to take all of their money out because this is what fractional reserve banking is. So they basically use your money to borrow uh, to lend out more money and invest invest your money and it's all based on fractional reserve banking. So if everybody all of a sudden takes it out, the whole thing just collapses. So it's not it's not it's as equally not real as the current financial system. It's just numbers on a screen. But obviously, people really think about this from the perspective of, oh, if I've got Bitcoin, can I go and spend it in a shop? It's getting to that point now where you can actually start to spend cryptocurrency in certain things. So there are there are shops you could you could spend cryptocurrency in. You can take cryptocurrency out, convert it into uh, normal dollars. But really, through the exchanges, in the same way that you can buy with your Australian dollars, cryptocurrency, you can then sell your cryptocurrency back into Australian dollars. But most people, the hardcore people, really keep it within the system, within the cryptocurrency system. One of the things you do need to take into account is capital gains tax as well, because this is probably the most the most overlooked thing. And this is something that I personally overlooked a lot. So think about this. So this is what the value of Bitcoin is today. So $96,487 Australian. So if I was to buy one Bitcoin, it would cost me $96,487.67 if I was to buy one Bitcoin. If I was to buy 0.1 Bitcoin, it would cost me, move the decimal over, $9,648.76. Now, this is this is as simple as it is. So if I want to buy, basically what I do is I transfer. So in the same way that you would use your bank account to transfer money to a family member for a Christmas present or whatever, you do exactly the same thing. So you transfer money to the account, your account on your exchange, and then this will have whatever you have in there. So for example, I might transfer $100. So then I would have $100 in here, and then I want to spend $100 on this Bitcoin. So I would get $100 worth of Bitcoin at $96,487. So it would be something like 0. 0.0000 something, whatever Bitcoin. If I want to sell it, when I go to sell it, the only thing that I need to take into account is this number has to be higher. And then I've made a profit. A profit. So whatever this was, 96,000, if it's higher than 96,000, I've made a profit. So let's say now this is 195,000. So therefore, when I go to sell my Bitcoin, I'm selling it at this price. So if you really think about it from the context of your house, Maybe five or 10 years ago, you bought your house for 500000 and now it's worth 550000 So when you sell it, you've made a $50,000 profit. It's the same principle with your cryptocurrency. Whatever you buy it at and then whatever you sell it at, that gap is the profit that you've made. So it's actually remarkably simple when you think about it from that perspective. So that's pretty much it. Those are the very basics of cryptocurrency investing. And again, like I said, I'm doing this for my friends and family because I get a lot of these questions from my friends and family and I really want them to know what this is all about because I do believe that this is going to be the future. It's like if I've never touched a mobile phone, I'll be left behind in this world. You'll be left behind. So if I'm I'm in my 30s now and if I hadn't touched a mobile phone and somebody gave me a phone, I'd be like, okay, what do I do with this thing? What does it do? Uh, I have no idea to operate it. What's this button here? I would have no idea what to do and I'd be left behind and technology is moving forward. Everything's moving forward and I'm getting left behind. So that's what I believe cryptocurrency is going to be in the future. It's going to be part of the monetary system in the future. It doesn't mean I don't believe that all of a sudden the US dollar is going to disappear and it's going to be all about Bitcoin. I don't believe in that kind of a future. I just believe this way of doing money where it's decentralized and it belongs to everybody and it doesn't belong to the banks is going to be the way of the future. So the more that you familiarize yourself with it now, the easier it's going to be when that transition happens in the future. Not to mention, in the meantime, you can actually get ahead financially just by investing in cryptocurrency. I certainly have gotten ahead 
a lot compared to what I would be five or 10 years ago. So with that, if you have any questions, I want to keep doing these videos for friends and family. I find them, I find I'm getting a lot of these types of questions. So if you have any questions, you can either leave some in the comment below. Again, go to that, go to the description and also just get yourself $10, set up an account. You get $10 of Bitcoin and just watch it. Watch what it does for the next year. I would also say probably, you know, now is not really almost the time to buy. I'd be buying maybe in one or two years time now because things, because everybody's starting to ask about it now. This is the problem. When everybody's starting to ask about it, it means it's kind of getting close to a top. So we're only going to be going up for another six months to a year, in my opinion. It might be more, it might be less. We never know. It's just based on the past. We never know how it's going to be. But if you're just wanting to dip your toes in and start preparing for the next cycle, now would be a really good time. All you have to do is go to that description, set up an account, and you get $10 of Bitcoin. And then just watch the price, see what it does, see how it moves, and just keep your eye on it. As you start to watch it, as you start to learn a little bit more, start with Bitcoin, and then start to broaden out. The real goal is to go decentralize, and that's where that's where it starts to get really advanced. But just take little steps first. Don't overwhelm yourself. It's like when you learn mathematics or English at school, you start at the basics. You start at additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, and then you work your way up to algebra once you've had that basic understanding. So start with the very basics with Bitcoin and then slowly start to work your way up. That's what I would recommend. That's what I've done. Hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care.